because it's all about, in his words, the running back, the running back. That, of course, is Ezekiel Elliott, who Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin called an elite, elite back, who may be, as Tomlin put it, the best in the business. Butler said if he's the Cowboys, then he doesn't really worry about the quarterback. He just feeds what has worked, which is the running back. And the Steelers? didn't have so much success against the Ravens running backs this past Sunday. Now, Butler said that a lot of that is specific to the way the Ravens can run the ball and the dynamism of Lamar Jackson, who is also always a threat to run. He said hopefully his team can do a better job in containing Elliott, similar to the way that they were able to somewhat contain Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry of the Giants and the Titans. He said then the quarterback will hopefully be forced to throw. And at that point, the Steelers will think about who the quarterback is. Appreciate you. Duty time for Big Deal or No Big Deal. No bigs. Guys, this looks like a bit of a, how can I put this, a mismatch on paper, if you will, between this Cowboys team and a Steelers team that has not had a loss all season. Big Deal or No Big Deal that the Steelers get into this game coming off a huge win over a division rival. Uh, this could potentially, you know, could they potentially be a little worn out after some games that were pretty brutal and smash mouth? Let's start with Kyle. Yeah, I would say absolutely they could be worn out. This is your classic trap game. They, they've come off these emotional victories, and then you show up and you lay an egg. But I say it's no big deal because they're playing the Cowboys. It's like, uh, they, how else can I put it? The, the Cowboys are starting Cooper Rush or Gilbert Gottfried at quarterback. I, I think that the Steelers are going to be all right. I don't think the Cowboys can beat the Jets right now. It's a great, great draw that they got them. And they better not be tired. I, I don't want to hear about that because that bye week, gone taken many would believe and you got to win 12 more games to get to win that Super Bowl and there ain't no letting up this is going to be a long season now a lot of the team is young but we haven't even hit that inevitable point yet where Ben is banged up and walking around with a limp we always gets to it's just his playing style so take care of business this weekend I'm sure they will I don't think if it was maybe 30 other teams in the league maybe 29 I'd be concerned but they got the Cowboys on the right week yeah, yeah no I don't look, believe that they'll be worn out this is the story of if, Tomlin oh. as as the Steelers uh, have been have been under Tomlin, they would always have these huge wins, and then you'd have these head scratching losses. I remember a few years ago, sure. lost to the Raiders when they needed the Raiders game to be in the playoffs. They lost to the Bears early on in the season, a few years back when everyone was surprised that would happen. Michael Vick and the Jets in the Meadowlands once beat a really loaded Steelers team when the Steelers needed to have a win. I, I think Tomlin's aware of that. I think a lot of the guys in that locker room are aware of that. And they know what the goal is here. The goal is to not just beat the Cowboys. It is to send a message around the league. This is not the same old Steelers where there would be a letdown game after a big win. I think this team is so dialed in, so focused, that even though Cam Hayward went down with an ankle injury at the end of last game, and even though there are some injuries across the entire roster, I, I think they are so dialed in and know what is at stake that they will not take the foot off the pedal. I think it's going to be a very, very long day for Cooper Rush, Garrett Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried and Godfrey the comedian. So I, I think all of them are going to have a tough time under center <laughs> for the Cowboys. I like Gottfried. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe this Best is a big ever. deal because they're built. They're, they're built to to do do it all. They are dynamic at every position. Big Ben is playing fantastic. He should be in the MVP conversation. Forget about his numbers. Just the way that he's playing. The wide receivers, tight ends, they're balling out. Everybody from Juju to Chase Claypool to Eric Ebron, who is the new addition. And you mentioned the run game earlier, Kay. They can do it all. This game can, can mimic a, a Ken Shamrock, Royce Gracie UFC fight, which means they can stand up and fight and throw the ball downfield, or they can take you to the dirt and ground and pound. That's what makes this team so dangerous. So is it a big deal that they've had some physical games? No, because they're built for this. Love it. Let's talk about these Dolphins, an exciting little team in the AFC East that's wide open. They have multiple picks, the Miami Dolphins do, uh, in both the first and the second rounds of the 2020 NFL Draft. Now, there was a report Miami only started to Watunga Bailoa over Ryan Fitzpatrick, who we know had some success for those Dolphins this season, to determine whether or not he would be pursuing a quarterback in that 2021 draft. You wanted to see what he had. Uh, at his press conference yesterday, b Flo was not asked about this. He was not even asked about it. He wanted to talk about it on his own. Take a listen. There's, you know, a couple of things out there. Um, let's call it a source close to Dolphins thinking. 
was saying that you know we we're we're auditioning you know to it. I'm I'm, I'm just going to tell you about my thinking. Uh, we, we brought to her here because we believe in him. Same as all the other you know, draft picks. Um, we de- we believe in developing players, and I think you guys have heard me talk about him the improvement of players on a daily basis. That would be the opposite of giving somebody a 10 game audition. So I guess that's, that's my thinking on that. Just so everybody's clear. Again, Shriggs, I think it's important to note he wasn't asked about it. He wanted to talk about it and bring it to the media so everybody heard it from his mouth. I'm, I'm mouth. I'm loving Brian Flores week after week, more and more and more and more. Can you sort of explain and break down what he's talking about right there? Yeah, so there's a national report out that said sources close to the Dolphins thinking is that reason that Tua was put in the lineup was because they just wanted to give him an audition and see for 10 games. We had to see what we had because it's a loaded quarterback draft. And remember, they got the Houston Texans first round pick in this upcoming draft and they might want to go quarterback. So they want to see what they have in Tua and you can't do that if he's on the bench. What I love here is that Flores just nips it in the bud, brings it up himself and is like, that's not the case. Who was our guy? And from everything I've heard, it's not the case. Everything I've heard is that Stephen Ross, the owner, has not just like Tua for, for this season, but has long had his eyes on Tua, that Flores and Greer were in the draft process. Tua was their guy from, from day one. They just didn't reveal it to anybody. And that Tua's already taken the team under his wing. Now, you could turn the page and say, ah, well, we heard that about Dwayne Haskins. We heard that about Josh Rosen. Let's see what happens. I think two is a different deal here. You don't have a tank for Rosen. You don't have a tank for for uh, Dwayne Haskins hashtag in Miami the last few years. I think Tua Tonga Vailoa is the quarterback of the future for the Miami Dolphins, and I respect Brian Flores for doing it. That's why it's a big deal. He brought it up and just nipped that right in the bud, addressing it in a press conference on Thursday. No doubt about it. Well said. The definition of an audition is an interview or a demonstration of a participant's suitability on his skill set. Flores is saying, we know what he has. We know what he can do. This isn't a guessing game. And the reason I love this is because when coaching decisions are made that we all question, media members like myself, former players, will look back and say, I wonder if they're making that decision for the right reasons. Or are they guessing just like all of us? Well, Flores is saying, we're not guessing. I'm not doing this as an audition. We're not seeing what Tua has. We drafted him because we know what he had, and we know what he can do. And not only that, we've been developing him ever since. So for me, I love the fact that he shut it all down because there's a big guessing game on why they did it. We joined in on the conversation on Good Morning Football. But Brian Flores, as still, as calm, and as certain as ever, every time he talks, I can't help but to love everything he says. Oh, yeah. Brian Flores, in my opinion, will be the coach of the year. I I, I think that. And I I think this was rock solid, as always, and I agree with what you guys are saying. I don't think they put in Tua just this this weird experiment to get ready for the draft next year. I think they put in Tua because they think Tua's awesome and Tua's more talented than Fitzpatrick. However, I also don't think it is wildly out of the question that, depending on how the ball bounces, the Dolphins could have a different starting quarterback next year. Let's not forget, this is one of those special years in terms of the draft coming up. This is the dra- This is one of the Andrew Luck type years. This is the Trevor Lawrence year, Justin Fields, all those guys. It's not like, well, the presumptive number one pick is Eric Fisher or even Miles Garrett. This is a different year. You get one about every seven or eight years, in my opinion, and this thing looms large. If Tua plays for the next couple of months and is not good, just doesn't have it, turnover prone, can't do the... They could move on. They could. Don't think they won't. And, Peter, you brought up the Josh Rosen thing. They did not get Josh Rosen for pennies. If I remember, it was a second and a fifth. Like, that's real money right there that they spent and then said, doesn't have it, we're out. I hope Tua does everything. Hopefully they play with him for 15 years. But I think with the college class coming out, with the bounty that the Dolphins have, if Tua does not have it, wouldn't shock me if that was it. Yeah, Jim, with your takes on Tua Tunga by Loa. Fascinating piece here that the Texans have.